Evening chaps, how's it going? I thought I'd do a quick video today because um, the Spectator is a good mag and it's behind a paywall so a lot of people won't get to read this. You all know by now that I fucking love ragging on <laughs> the Ginger Prince and his appalling, notoriously shameless, self-promoting fucking harpy of a wife that goes on about how black she is even though my bean bag's got more of a tan on it. Like, she, I seriously thought she was Italian or fucking something. I didn't think for a second she was mixed race, let alone black. And who cares, right? Who gives a fuck what she is? In this day and age, 99% of the people that they call racist don't give a fuck what you look like. They care what you think. I'm sure almost everyone watching this agrees with that, right? Who do you think someone like Donald Trump would get on with better? Ben Carson or Thomas Sowell or Candace Owens? who all happen to be black, by the way, or some fucking cringing soy boy like Owen Jones. Like, it's, it's not about what you look like. For almost everyone on planet Earth now, we've moved on, and I guarantee I'd get on better with normal, middle-of-the-road, centrist, conservative voters, regardless of the colour, than a bunch of straight, white, northern men who were all dyed in the wool labour twats, carbonistas and communists. So, you'd think we'd have moved on by now. I thought we had in the 1990s, but we've just gone backwards for the last fucking 20 years, haven't we? Anyway, it's a piece by the excellent Joanna Williams. I'm sure those that are into YouTube will have already um, seen her in seen her on celluloid. She's done a lot of interviews with the likes of Dave Rubin and um, Brendan O'Neill on Spiked. And I thought I'd go through the piece because, as I said, the spec is behind a paywall and I love any excuse for dripping about Harry and Meghan. <laughs> I've done it a few times and I'll, uh, I'll link the videos in the past that I made ripping the piss out of the silly ginger twat uh, because uh, it's a favourite pastime of mine. It says, is there anything we do not know about Harry and Meghan? They might have stepped back as senior royals in order to avoid the media spotlight. They might have had a habit of suing newspapers and photographers for breaching their privacy and a fondness for elaborate screens and fences around their various homes. Yeah, if anyone didn't know, they moved out here to LA. Uh, which in itself is funny, right? Because they said they were sick of the press and they fucking <laughs> moved to Los Angeles. Like, if there's one place on planet Earth where you know you're not going to be able to avoid the press, it's fucking Los Angeles, surely, surely. That's like saying you don't like gambling and moving to Vegas. Like, there's some places on planet Earth where you know certain shit goes on and the one place you know you're going to get hounded by the press, even worse than in London, is Los Angeles, Hollywood, Tinseltown. Uh, the idea that they, don't, that they want privacy is laughable. Laughable. So, um, apparently they erect screens around their $18 million LA mansion because there's hiking trails nearby. There's the screens. What a bunch of cunts. I seriously don't, I've never, I mean, I, I don't live too far from here. I've never understood the appeal of living in them hills. Like whenever you drive around, you can see all these houses right at the very top of these big fuck off mountains. And I just think, wouldn't you rather live somewhere like quieter, but where you've actually got neighbors and there's a bit of life around you. Like where I live, you know, you can walk for two minutes and you're at like a Starbucks. You can walk for five minutes in the other direction. There's plenty of parks and trees and you know, there's a fucking subway station you're not too far. Like there's a bit of civilization. Like these fucking mad cunts all pay like $20 million to go and live at the top of a very, very high mountain. And it's like, unless you dry, want to drive everywhere. It just seems a bit of a shit place to live. Although they do no fucking walking out here, like none. They have drive through banks, which always astounded me. It's like, listen, if you're going to be that much of a fat fuck that you're going to go to the bank, get a load of money and then <laughs> take the drive through in McDonald's, you can at least walk to the fucking bank. I'd never seen a drive through bank till I got to uh, Alabama. Uh, and then I was like, whoa, this is a thing then. Like the fat knackers really do drive to the bank, get the cash out, lean out the window and get the uh, money out and then drive to the restaurant and <laughs> buy a bucket full of chicken. Yeah, because plates, plates are for fucking losers. Get a bucket full of chicken and then belt that into you and then drive home 
and they even have an automated garage so you don't have to burn three calories opening and closing the fucking garage door and then uh, <laughs> roll out into your fucking bed like <laughs> I think there's some people in the south especially who probably walk about 150 yards a day during their average work day so I don't see the appeal but that's just me anyway that's where they live top of mount dog shit there's the big screens got their uh, <laughs> probably paying them poor Mexican blokes under the table to put the cunt up <laughs> and uh, yeah that's where they live privacy obsessed but moved to LA unbelievable of course you are you're, of course you're obsessed with your privacy you daft ginger twat but with the publication of Finding Freedom, there is surely no intimate detail of this apparently privacy-loving couple's life that has not been made public. What she's talking about here is the interviews they give where they just drop every single aspect of their shit lives onto people. Like, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Said they know exactly what William told his brother when they said they were getting serious. And we know about the first date. And we know that Megan performed a yoga pose. <laughs> Such a cliché. And we know that she FaceTimed a friend from a bath to discuss her dad. And we know the exact meal of Harry ate with the Queen before the final meeting. On and on it goes. No detail is too personal or simply too trivial to be left unshared. Yeah, and they're obsessed with privacy. Do me a fucking favour. Said, despite revealing details that presumably only people who were in the room when it happened could ever conceivably know, we are expected to believe that Carolyn Durand and Omage Scobie wrote Finding Freedom without input from the Sussexes. But Harry and Meghan's silence speaks volumes. There are no threats of lawsuits. We can only conclude the Duke and Duchess very much approve. Yep. Yeah. And why shouldn't they? In Finding Freedom, our intrepid heroes bravely triumph over the snobby brother, the unfriendly sister-in-law and the pompous palace officials. Pictures of radiant Meghan smiling coyly hand in hand with her defiant prince accompany every piece. My god, I'll tell you what, I'd rather read the back of the shampoo bottle when I'm having a shite. Like, is there, is there anything worse? I'd rather read Robert D'Angelo's latest piece of hateful, spiteful race baiting. That's how interested I am in reading Finding Freedom. Anyway, Joanna Williams hypothesises that the whole reason that everybody's interested in the Duchess difficult, uh, or me again, I prefer that moniker for her, uh, is because the rest of the family is so quiet. And uh, she points out uh, the Queen is not just a monarch and a head of state, but a 94-year-old great-grandmother that has opted for a radically different set of values than those she inherited at birth. She says Harry and Meghan share every detail of their lives with the entire world, and the Queen and Prince Philip offer only rare snapshots. Her Majesty embodies a lifelong commitment to service and duty. Harry and Meghan seem dedicated only to themselves. Like, I do agree with that, but I don't agree with the conclusion. The Queen is quiet and reserved and dignified, and um, everyone loves Prince Philip, because he's fucking just a good crack. I wish I could still find the old Viz comic I used to have. I had a Viz comic once with a comic about Prince Philippin, where he's like visiting an orphanage and he just <laughs> racially abuses all the disabled kids. It's funny as fuck, but I can't find it anywhere. I'm assuming they pulled it because they'd probably get crucified if that fucking thing turned up now. Anyway, he's a comedy genius, Prince Philip. But I don't agree that we actually care. I think that the fucking pensioners care. And the sad bastards who live in London and are obsessed with celebrity. I think they care, but I don't think the average general public gives a flying fuck, do they? I certainly don't, and I'm not a staunch anti-monarchist Republican. I'm ambivalent like everybody else is. It says, from feminism to Black Lives Matter to environmentalism, we know exactly where their sympathies lie. This is Harry and Meghan. So the Sussexes, we see exactly how corrosive woke politics are to personal relationships. Finding freedom, freedom turns up one family grievance after another. They seem to perceive microaggressions everywhere. Of course she's into microaggressions. She's a fucking maniac. It says, from uh, William's advice to take things slowly... Complaints from staff who don't want to be emailed instructions at 5am. Every encounter seems to have deemed to have been an expression of deep-rooted racism. Relationships cannot survive such scrutiny. Of course they can't. Said the book suggests Harry and Meghan are a thin-skinned couple prepared to sell out close family members in the name of settling petty gripes and grievances. They seem to care about nothing and no one other than themselves. <laughs> Scathing, Joanna. Said, yet their story fascinates us because it represents the clash of values playing out with the heart of our own society. Well, it fascinates you, love, but most certainly not me. 
It is between a culture based on dignity and one based on victimhood. Sadly for the Sussexes, exposing microaggressions and making personal grievances public does not appear to make for a happy life. No fucking shit. The, the thing I want to make clear, right, was through a few sources. When these twats arranged to get married, right, there was no problem at all in the public sphere. None. The, the media's reporting of it was fawning, the unending fawning approval by everyone. They made a big deal of the Queen consenting to the marriage and the nice letter she wrote. Um, the BBC was fucking loving it. Ye, know ye that we have consented to our matrimony between our most dearly beloved grandson, Prince Henry Charles, Albert David of Wales, and Rachel Meghan Markle. And then there was the globe, the globe trotting <laughs> Meghan fans coming from all around the world for a real life fairy tale. Like it was unending. Everyone was loving it. Meghan and Harry invited the public to the wedding day and they turned out in fucking droves to meet them. Look, does that look like a public that hates a racist, patriarchal, misogynistic public? Or does that look like thousands, thousands upon thousands of fucking fawning, adoring, in my opinion, somewhat sad bastards? Uh, I'd rather, if I, even if I think I love the fuckers, I'd rather watch it from the pub. <laughs> I might put it on the telly in the boozer, but whatever. Point is, patriotic, pleased fans turning out to voice their approval in front of the world. I was absolutely delighted to be invited to this historic event, says 24-year-old Josh from Cumbria in the northeast of England. Yep, look, he's loving it. Alexander Willis, he's fucking loving it. He's got his Union Jack suit on. 17 year old lad, it's marvellous. There's a load of birds when Harry met Megan, oh how nice. They're loving it. Loving it. Students, old fuckers, women, couldn't get enough. So don't tell me, don't tell me for a second that the general public is racist, bigoted, sexist, America-phobic. I don't know what shit excuses Meghan Markle's come out with, but it's not true. It's demonstrably not true. Google fucking Harry wedding and you can see the right of it. No, this story is from today. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle seen as climate hypocrites by most Brits. And she's always gobbing off, oh, it's the empire, it's the racism. Look, two thirds of Britons think it is hypocritical for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle to advocate taking on climate change while flying by private jet. Exclusive polling for Newsweek reveals. Well, blow me down. Having a climate fucking footprint the size of Bigfoot and the Jolly Green Giant combined <laughs> doesn't adhere, doesn't endear the general public. 26 times higher than average. Well, that's making themselves look good. The transport minister's taking their side there because it's not 26 times higher than average. It's about 500 times higher than average. Because if I get on a flight with 200 and other f and f with 250 other arseholes that can't afford a private jet, my climate footprint isn't just slightly smaller than Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's. It's 500 times smaller because he's got on a private jet. That plane in the sky is purely for him. It's not 26 times higher than average. It's fucking 500 times higher than average. I don't know how they've got that figure. He takes an average of 26 flights a year and the average person only has one. Yeah, but not coach on a private jet that is only in the air for him. So don't tell me it's only 26 times mine. And I fucking seriously doubt the little twat puts his recycling out. <laughs> so bollocks, 26 times higher than average. A survey of 2,000 adults showed 66% believe they're hypocritical. Yes. Just 8% said they weren't hypocritical. And that's just, and that's not all. The Wimbledon issue was a big one. She started being a fucking horrible, necky bastard to all the nice old ladies who wanted to get a photo with her. They weren't doing anything wrong. She was rude to all the fucking staff. Just an entitled, gobby, up a crust twat. Yeah, you work for us. That's the rule. We paid for your shitty wedding dress. We paid for your bastard wedding. You work for us. You stuck up fucking Jezebel. One official said it was a nightmare. She was a nightmare. She turned up dressed casually in jeans, wearing denims, bad manners, and if a visitor wants to sit in the area reserved for members, um, they're not allowed to wear them. Said, on top of that, Meghan reportedly insisted on attending the match in a private capacity and going incognito. 
which sounds pretty unrealistic given that the former Hollywood actress is a global celebrity. Despite the inherently public nature of her appearance, neither Megan or her security staff thought it was reasonable to ask people in the crowd not to photograph her. Wimbledon officials complained at the Times about her self-regarding paranoia. Sally Jones, a media consultant, told the Daily Telegraph that a royal protection officer had tapped her on the shoulder and asked her not to use her phone to photograph Megan. Jones said not being, she would not even been aware that she was sitting in the same rosa and said that the officer seemed embarrassed to be making the request. He seemed a bit mystified as to why he was being asked to make such a request, Jones told the Daily Telegraph. I told him it was bonkers and that even if I'd been trying to snap the Duchess, I'd have got a blurry picture of her right ear. Apart from anything else, there were hundreds of people clicking away and I said to him, have you thought about having a word with any of those television cameras? <laughs> Based old lady. He looked a little uncomfortable. Puzzlingly random control freakery. An American actress and former tennis wife blasted Megan for her behaviour, saying she had to have a bodyguard muscle somebody out is just so tacky. She said, if you think about Princess Diana, who was inclusive and how inclusive she was, she would never turn anyone away. I had so much hope for me again. I wanted her to be the next Princess Diana. Well, she isn't. She's a stuck-up, arrogant, entitled, mouthy, gobshite, and everybody fucking hates her. The short version, folks, is that is why Meghan Markle is roundly despised. My fucking granny would have... Well, she was, she was a big fan of the Queen. She'd have probably fucking... Pulled some jihadi shit on fucking Meghan Markle. <laughs> like, it's just a piss take. So there we have it. The fact of the matter is, the whole country was behind the wedding. The whole country was supportive of her. Everybody loved her. And then she started gobbing off. And she started being a hypocrite. And she started throwing nice old women out with a fucking tennis course. And she started flying around on a private jet whilst slagging off all the peons for going on all day to Spain once a year. And she started playing. And worst of all, the most criminal of the lot is instead of holding her hands up when people started calling her on a hypocrisy, she instantly played the race card in the most deceitful and dishonest way, slurred the very people that had cheered her on at the wedding six months earlier and paid for the fucking thing and called them all fascist, Nazi, racist, bigot, patriarchal, fucking whatever. She's just a woke social justice activist and everybody fucking hates her for nothing as trivial as her sex or her ethnicity or her country of birth but because she is an insufferable twat of the highest order. Feel free to send this to anyone who wishes to dispute the obvious facts of the matter. She was beloved by all and now she is hated by all. Thus, it can't be down to anything as trivial as racism or bigotry and is entirely down to the fact that she acts like an horrible cunt. Thanks for listening. I'll see you a lot on Sunday. Cheers.